bottle of water. Just perfect to tank up for a warm day. But what if I told you that something made from this water can run the engines of those autos? Today, we meet a man who made that possible. It's a dream Professor L.M. Das nourished for 25 years using hydrogen gas as an automobile fuel. You get hydrogen from water, upon combustion it gives water which is again comes back to the atmosphere. So the noxious pollutants which are given out by the petroleum based fuel uh, vehicles like hydrocarbon, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, particulate matter, all they are intrinsically absent in hydrogen operated engines. The trouble was, conventional engines aren't designed to burn hydrogen, a highly explosive gas. Professor Das perfected a special electronic ignition system that feeds the engine tiny quantities of gas. After testing it for years in labs like this one at IIT Delhi, Das took it on the road. Fifteen such three-wheelers have been safely ferrying passengers at Pragati Medan in Delhi for the past four months. Just a kilo of gas is enough for 70 kilometers. The Western countries' more emphasis is on fuel cells. But in Indian context, we felt that internal combustion engines have already been operated on compressed natural gas in this country. So, graduating from compressed gas natural gas to hydrogen, the cleanest spawning fuel, of water. Just perfect to tank up for a warm day. But what if I told you that something made from this water can run the engines of those autos? Today, we meet a man who made that possible. It's a dream Professor L.M. Das nourished for 25 years using hydrogen gas as an automobile fuel. You get hydrogen from water, upon combustion it gives water, which is again comes back to the atmosphere. So the noxious pollutants which are given out by the petroleum based fuel uh, vehicles, like hydrocarbon, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, particulate matter, all they are intrinsically absent in hydrogen operated engines. The trouble was, conventional engines aren't designed to burn hydrogen, a highly explosive gas. Professor Das perfected a special electronic ignition system that feeds the engine tiny quantities of gas. After testing it for years in labs like this one at IIT Delhi, Das took it on the road. Fifteen such three-wheelers have been safely ferrying passengers at Pragati Medan in Delhi for the past four months. Just a kilo of gas is enough for 70 kilometers. The Western countries' more emphasis is on fuel cells. But in Indian context, we felt that internal combustion engines have already been operated on compressed natural gas in this country. So, graduating from compressed gas natural gas to hydrogen, the cleanest spawning fuel. So, uh, very good morning. Am I uh, audible? So, yes, yes. very good yes, morning. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good morning, good morning, one and all. It's my pleasure to welcome everyone for this distinguished IET lecture series. As, as you know, we are going through a very tough phase of the mankind, that is the COVID-19. So, as this circumstances, the social distancing is the key in the current circumstances. So we all do agree that the today's scenario, the online mode is the only enhancing knowledge. Addressing this context, we are conducting a IET web series, uh, distinguished series on the topic of the potential of hydrogen as pr uh, prospective of flow emission. We have the distinguished speaker, Professor Alam Das, he's a retired professor from IIT Delhi. He hold a PhD degree in the mechanical engineering from IIT Delhi. Dr. Das, Dr. Das has got a teaching experience for the more than 44 years to his credit. He has supervised a more than 34 PhD thesis and 77 master project thesis. He has published more than 80 papers in various 
international and national journals. He was a visiting professor in University of California and many more. He had delivered invited lectures in USA, Canada, England, France, Germany, Japan, Switzerland, Australia. He had a member of core group of the automotive research, that is the CAR, C-A-R, and the member of expert committee for the auto fuel vision and policy 2205, 2025. He was the convener of technical committee of the World Hydrogen Technology Convention held in the August 2009 at New Delhi. Presently, he is also chairman of the uh, sectional committee of very prestigious PCD3 for the Bureau of Indian Standard. Professor Das has been a principal investigator of several sponsored projects funded by DEST, MNRE, General Motor USA, European Union. Professor Das has also coordinated another MNRE sponsored project with Mahindra and Mahindra in which hydrogen fuel uh, minibus engine after extensive lab tested has been developed. Dr. Das has been awarded Rajiv Gandhi Samman by the Department of the Science and Technology, Odisha in 2005. International Association of Hydrogen Energy has given him outstanding service award to his cause of hydrogen economy. So this one is the only 10% citation of the Professor Das. So I invite, yes, not taking much time, I invite Professor Das, please carry on your, the, this uh, session, potential of the hydrogen as prospective low emission. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Very good morning. It's a pleasure to, uh, in fact, I am thankful to the organizers for having given me the opportunity to share some of my thoughts, ideas, research pursuits and attainments in the area of hydrogen energy. Uh, as you know, we are on the threshold of a big crisis right now. Energy crisis and environmental degradation have been bothering the humankind for a very long time. And the transport sector has been one of the major offender for degrading the environment. We are at a point so that we can't put a reverse gear and cannot go back to an earlier lifestyle. The present lifestyle has to be maintained. And therefore, the internal combustion engines, which form the backbone of transportation system, are bound to exist. It's not possible to have a uniform alternative for the entire world or to redesign an engine because at a point of time when petroleum-based fuels were universally accepted, they were experimented at different parts of the world and were proven worthy. But that phase of civilization is over. We have to... Uh, so I'm starting uh, the presentations right now. Next slide I'll be... You know, I've, I've shown you a Kenyan uh, proverb, the earth is not given to us by our parents, it has been loaned by our children. So it is our moral responsibility to hand over a livable planet to the next generation. And this is probably the universal feeling. I have chosen to talk about hydrogen because hydrogen has the potential of killing two birds in one stone providing an ultimate freedom from energy crisis and at the same time protecting the environment. You know, Jules Verne had already said, I'll show it. Presently, the transport sector, I mean, this is, uh, these are the data and they contribute about 14% was the global emissions. Carbon dioxide represents the largest portion of greenhouse gases and road transport alone emits 16% of the global commission. So you can imagine if the picture is amplified in your mind, you can see how terrible impact of this environmental degradation is on the civilization. This is a well to fill on Indian roads done by the Center for Science and Environment. And as you can see, the bar is going up and 
this is never looking back. It's a tremendous amount of greenhouse gases. The, I mean, the carbon dioxide is the major greenhouse gas, so everything has been computed in terms of carbon dioxide. So you can see the carbon dioxide is so large and it is going and increasing. It is not looking back, but we have to protect this earth. We have to have a life livable for the future. So keeping this in mind, I like to restrict my discussion to the area of alternative fuels for internal combustion engines, which are tribally used in the transport and power sector of the developed, developing, and even the underdeveloped countries. These internal combustion engines, as I said, at one point of time, petroleum-based fuels were accepted universally because they were tested at different places and the engines were designed to accept the petrol and residual. At this point of time, it is not possible to have a different design of engine which should be universally acceptable because the need of every country is different. And we got to have a particular internal combustion engine, the configuration of which should be suitable to the locally available resources. But at one point of time, it should be seen. See, all of you might be knowing that in Brazil, they have got gasohol. Gasol is a language barrage of gasoline and alcohol. That means petrol and alcohol. If you go to a filling station, as or the petrol pump we say in our country, you get their gasohol where you have 26% by volume of ethyl alcohol added to gasoline. But that has not been, that cannot be universally adopted because that is again a location specific fuel. Similarly, you have seen in our country, the compressed natural gas came off very rapidly. At one point of time, when it was observed that the metros of India were unlivable the CNG was recommended as a fuel. Interestingly, you might have observed by the Supreme Court. The technological aspects of the evolution of the engine to accommodate CNG as a fuel was not probably developed till then. And the CNG kits were procured from abroad and CNG was utilized in the transport sector of the country and they had become cleaner. So similarly, what I'm trying to say that there are many alternative fuels which are being adopted in different countries of the world. The list I have shown here is hydrogen, compressed natural gas, biodiesel, hydrogen added natural gas, ethyl alcohol, methyl alcohol, liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, where the propane is the major combustible component, biogas, where methane is the major combustible component, producer gas, and biomass to liquid, gas to liquid, coal to liquid. So that means people, the researcher, the industry uh, people all over the world are trying to evolve some alternative so that the internal combustion engines which form the backbone of the transport sector do survive. In this context, I like to recall the vision of Jules Verne. Jules Verne was a French scientific fiction writer. He had written many interesting novels. And in one of the novels, Mysterious Island, in 1876, he has said, he has given a very lifeful description that a group of people are going in a ship in the ocean. Suddenly, to some people, it strikes that Suppose the vehicle, suppose the ship is not able to move ahead and we don't have the fuel, how do we move? Then there is someone else in the ship. He said, look, you don't worry. We are in this vast ocean, vast mass of water. We will derive some fuel out of this water and propel the ship further. So what does it indicate? It indicates that Jules Verne, the visionary scientist, had thought of hydrogen as a fuel because hydrogen has to be obtained from water. And this hydrogen he had considered from the energy crisis or the fuel starvation point of view. 
the entire picture took a new dimension at one point of time when it was felt that the environmental degradation is becoming more harmful because of the petroleum waste fields and this country style in this point of time the the president of united states george bush he declared hydrogen as the freedom fuel see joseph one had in 1876 thought of hydrogen from the energy crisis point of view george did it from the environmental protection point of view and at this point of time we must have something which will not only energy crisis as well as provide uh, adequate measures to protect the environment and hydrogen is one such fuel in uh, juice world uh, the fault to at the freedom fuel because freedom from the monopoly of oil producing countries don't depend on petroleum and at the same time freedom from the energy crisis this is a work which has done in university of miami as you can see in 1974 the there is a theme conference in university of miami a group of hydrogen exponents joined and they had a conference they literally looked at all the angles probably they had really thought well ahead of time because you know at one point of time before 50 years it was thought that petroleum will dwindle fast so by early 70s we will have to have some alternative the auto giants of united states and many developed countries has started thinking of alternative fuels at one point of time they said that methyl alcohol is going to the petrol of the future but the underground water pollution and several other things associated with methyl alcohol again put it put a reverse scale so so all these things have been tried out at one point or other producer gas was probably very exhaustively tested during the world war days biogas and uh, you know the the need of all the countries are not same at this point of time we got to have a fuel which will be country specific location specific there should be raw material to derive the fuel there should be technology available to develop the fuel for the raw material and last but not the least the fuel should be environmental compatible as you can say small example biodiesel biodiesel in india is a lot of stress has been given right for the days of planning commission that they should be from the non edible fish stocks because we do not want to interfere with the kitchen but abroad this biodiesel is derived from safola sunflower which are essentially edible in indian context and it will be criminal to divert the kitchen stuff for such activities so anyway that is just a idea a general idea like how different fields are being tried so lot of work has been tried at different pockets of the country of the world on hydrogen this is a work which was done by professor t n bejiro blue who happens to be the director of clean energy research institute university of miami and they had projected from 1974 hydrogen will take a very concrete step and as you can see by 2000 it will be very glaringly <clears throat> and by 2076 sorry <coughs> thank you by 2076 the entire fossil fuel Will be totally replaced by hydrogen. This is a work which is supported by the International Association of Hydro Energy, a project which was funded by UNIDO and carried out in uh, Turkey. And this is a study which has taken into account the practical applications and lot of modeling studies. this is a picture which very indicately shows that on the left side you can find out hydrogen could be literally produced from any source biomass water wind solar geothermal nuclear oil coal 
I mean, literally from everything, from fossil and non-fossil sources. And the extraction of hydrogen or the production of hydrogen is highly efficient and reliable. I'll not go into the details of uh, the production mechanism because of lack of time. But as you can see, what you get at the end of the day could be adopted in the transport sector and the distributed generation sector. In this particular context, I like to recall here <clears throat> the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, which happens to be the nodal agency of India, had prepared a hydrogen roadmap, how to implement hydrogen. In that particular committee, there were members, in fact, uh, Mr. Ratan Tata was the chairman of that committee. There were people from the industries, uh, Mahindra and Mahindra, Tata Motors, uh, Indian Oil, IIT Delhi, Banash Hindu University Planning Commission. So a particular report was prepared, which well defined objective and implementation schemes. In that, the transportation sector and distributed generation sector were given a lot of importance because for our vehicles, we need to substitute and hydrogen was thought alternative at that point of time also because in many places of the country like IIT Delhi, Banaras in the University, IIT Madras, a lot of work was already done by that time. Then distributed generation system because you know in this country grid system is a failure. We got to have distributed gen sets and this is where hydrogen has got a lot of potential. Keeping this in mind, the technology culprits were carried out. And as I said, I like to localize my thoughts on the internal combustion engines, which are probably the best, which have the best potential to hydrogen for the transport and the power sector. Internal combustion engines, all of you know, could be broadly classified into two divisions, spark ignition engine and compression ignition engine. Spark ignition engines or gasoline engines or petrol engines are we to refer here. And the diesel engines are the compression ignition engines. You know, it's almost axiomatic that a good fuel for petrol engine is a bad fuel for diesel engine. You cannot liberally interchange them because the physical chemical properties of the fuels and the combustion mechanism are radically different. So strictly speaking, Hydrogen is a good fuel for petrol engine or spark ignition engine. At one point of time in Germany, BMW and many car manufacturers, they tried hydrogen supplementation. I'm talking the work of which is, which was carried out before about say four decades. Hydrogen supplementation in gasoline engines, that means the engine which is designed to run on gasoline or petrol it can be made to run on both gasoline and hydrogen, both fuels together. If an engine run on both the fuels, we call it a dual fuel engine. But if an engine can run independently on two fuels, we can call it a bi-fuel engine. So for example, hydrogen engine are, I mean the uh, spark ignition engines are more suitable for hydrogen operation. But if hydrogen has to be used in a diesel engine, then it has to have a dual fuel operation. That means hydrogen and CNG, uh, hydrogen and diesel together. Let me recall here, IIT Delhi had been sponsored projects from Ministry of New and Renewable Energy long time ago, since the days it was MNES, Ministry of non convenience Energy Sources. And even before that, when it was DNES, Department of non convenience Energy Sources, which was a part of the then DST in 1980s. We had got lots of projects and we soiled our heads and worked in the laboratory to evaluate the optimum performance and emission characteristics of the engine. You know, diesel in Indian context occupies a separate space as compared to the other developing countries. I mean, uh, United States and many developing countries of Europe, they usually look substitutes for petrol or gasoline because they need it for their vehicles only. But in India, where we have the 
vehicles for the public transport system like the buses they run on diesel the trucks which uh, are just for agricultural applications they need diesel the pumps are in diesel so at one point of time the ministry suggested iit delhi to explore the possibility of utilizing diesel in the uh, utilizing hydrogen in the diesel engine or the compression ignition engine we tried that also and i'll share with you what we achieved at it so gasoline and hydrogen supplementation third is hydrogen and cng this is a very interesting area which has come up very recently compressed natural gas in india has proven to be a very effective transportation fuel it has cleaned the air so it has been tried as i think you just saw that uh, video in which uh, i had made a general comment that the population of india is already used to accept a gaseous fuel we have graduated from the liquid fuel of petrol and diesel to a gaseous fuel of compressed natural gas methane is the major combustible component in the compressed natural gas so since methane is a hydrocarbon the compressed natural gas operated fuels are bound to give some hydrocarbons or carbon monoxide but if we move even graduate from a gaseous fuel like compressed natural gas to hydrogen we don't get any pollutants no hydrocarbons no carbon monoxide no sulfur dioxide nothing so that is hydrogen cng which uh, as you might be aware the supreme court in india has already given a green signal and hydrogen cng branding for the buses will be running in indian roads very soon you know in india we have adopted a series of aggressive measures to protect the environment the degradation of which has been caused mainly due to the transport sector many small things like uh, replacing the old vehicles uh, or the european standards uh, alternative fuels you like cng biodiesel pro propane all these things have been very effective and moving forward in this direction we look and we find hydrogen stands at the end of the road i'm not going to details of uh, textual information but these are some of the properties uh, which i thought i should uh, bring to your knowledge you see the i'll just compare it hydrogen with gasoline <clears throat> minimum ignition energy of hydrogen is much lesser compared to that of gasoline so it indicates that it is possible to ignite to initiate combustion in a hydrogen engine by a low energy spark similarly if flame speed is 4 to 75% by volume for hydrogen where it is a very narrow window by 1 to 8% for gasoline that means hydrogen is flammable over a wide range very wide range 4% to 75% and flame speed is 2.7 meters per second as compared to 0.35 for gasoline that means it has got very high flame speed it has got very wider range of flammability limit and it has got very low minimum ignition energy so combination of all these properties together if fruitfully put into the system we get lots of advantages out of it so this is a pictorial uh, i mean this is a graphical view of uh, the same property this is again the minimum ignition energy you can see is very low for hydrogen compared to methane i chose to compare it with methane because in india cng is being used as a fuel and methane is the major combustible component in uh, cng the major problem of hydrogen has been backfire you know interestingly hydrogen has got a very minimum ignition energy and suppose the minimum ignition is supplied to the spark plug without the knowledge of the operator the engine fires the engine starts and if because of the flame speed is very high the flame propagates back into the manifold 
this has been the situation backfire, which has been the main Achilles shell for the hydrogen engine and which has stood on the progress of hydrogen engine for decades because hydrogen flame is invisible. The researchers, when they tried on the application of hydrogen engines, they were not able to find out if the flame was propagating back to the manifold. And suddenly, the inlet manifold was destroyed. There have been several occasions on this. In IIT Delhi, also in the initial phase of our experiments in early 1980s, we had taken a lot of precaution to avoid the problem of backfire because at that point of time, hydrogen researchers had been very, very particular about the technology technique of controlling the backfire. The presence of uh, hot particles in the cylinder, the hot spots in the spark plugs, particulate matter, communication of the fresh charge, particularly in the multi cylinder engine, these are the main regions of backfire. So to control the backfire, it is very important to devise an appropriate injection system. Carburation system is not ideal because it is it cannot get rid of backfire. So in IIT Delhi, this particular table reflects the research carried out for a very long period, for, for a period of several years. And we had optimized the flow condition of hydrogen into the engine, pre-IVCs, pre-intake valve closure. We tried continuous carburation, continuous manifold injection, time manifold injection, low pressure action. And this work is uh, internationally reported and it was published in International Journal of Hydrogen And we made a comparative evaluation of all these processes over a very long period of time and concluded that time manifold injection, when the hydrogen flow commences after opening the intake valve and is completed prior to the intake valve closure, that means the chance of air and fuel coming together in contact with a hot spot is, uh, I mean, drastically reduced, so backfire will not occur. Even the direct cylinder injection backfire is precluded by definition, but the direct cylinder injection occurring at the end of compression stroke needs very high pressure. And we have also tried the injection system, and the injection system, unless it is properly prepared, it's very difficult to for the injector to survive the severe thermal environment of the combustion chamber. That is why time manifold injection is the most suitable mechanism for the hydrogen fueling. This is a very interesting graph which shows the versatility of hydrogen which is capable of combustion over a very wide range. But with a view to control the undesirable combustion phenomena, a narrow window should be chosen for a particular application. You can run it in a boiler, you can run it in a uh, gas turbine, you can run it in an engine. For, for engine operation, as you have seen in this graph, this is a very famous graph from the book Lewis and Vernal Bay. It's a famous book on combustion. And you find out there's a narrow window in which hydrogen combustion is very stable. All these properties, of course, there was, uh, it's not an occasion to go into the details of those thermochemical, physical chemical characteristics. On the basis of these, these were the configurations which were built in IIT Delhi over a period of time. The first figure showed that in the research engine, we devised a, we installed an injection system because you know that research, particular research engine could run on petrol and diesel. So diesel was used as a recirculating fluid and hydrogen injector was used to inject hydrogen in the manifold. But that is a research engine which we could vary the compression ratio, we could vary the injection timing uh, and uh, many other parameters. So we did that, but the problem is that that is a research engine which can run on petrol as well as diesel. That means there was a spark ignition system, there was a pump pump also. This will not normally be available. So the hydraulically operated injection system, in the second figure, you can find cam actuated injection system because the first one was a system specific. Unless there is an engine available which can run on petrol and diesel, 
we cannot use this injection system but that's a very restricted application so we chose to design the same injection system operated by a cam and the second figure shows the cam actuated injection system and the fuel is injected into the manifold and the injector is actuated by a cam after optimizing this injection system in the research engine and carrying out exhaustive tests to find out what should be the application potential the third figure we did it in a utility engine in a small engine it's not a research engine the research parameters were optimized in the first two sets of configurations and they were transferred to the small horsepower engine and the engine was running in the second row you find out there is a gen set petrol gen set that means spark ignition engine gen set and you can see the bulbs are running the sec the middle figure is your show leland multi cylinder engine in which hydrogen supplemented multi cylinder engine and the last figure is a hydrogen operated diesel gen set that means diesel and hydrogen together could be applied for a gen set the technology such that it can apply to a gen set to a pump set to a lawn mower all that i'll not go into details of it uh, but uh, as you can see the penetration of hydrogen into our regular lifestyle has been demonstrated in such a way that we can use it in our daily lifestyle in our cooking in our lawn in a lawn mower in our activities in a power power plant for decentralized power system as well as for the vehicle this is a very interesting graph which was generated by us this is very widely reported in the world literature oxides of nitrogen is the only pollutant of concern in hydrogen engine it doesn't have hydrocarbon carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide particular matter nothing is there only oxides of nitrogen and as all of you are aware the kinetics of nox formation is highly temperature dependent and equivalence is sure if you recall the graph of a gasoline engine or for a petrol engine you find it is a bell shaped curve and the peak coming closer to the stoichiometric but here you find that initially It, it is not a bell shaped curve initial portion is literally close to the x axis that is practically zero that means if you can run the engine an equivalent ratio of about 0.6 you practically get no oxides of nitrogen it can lead to a zero emission vehicle which is not possible in a uh, conventional gasoline engine where the range of equivalence ratio is very low and it is possible to have a very a practically zero emission engine similarly thermal efficiency the hydrogen engine can embrace the benefits of both the spark ignition the petrol engine and diesel engine it can run in a very high compression ratio and it can run unthrottled there will not be any pumping losses and the maximum thermal efficiency we have been able to achieve with about 44% which is uh, unthinkable on any configuration of petrol engine and as you can see this is a temperature this is a pressure crank angle diagram and you can find there is no perturbation in the curve the combustion is so smooth as far as the safety of hydrogen is concerned you know to a man on the street if you talk of hydrogen he thinks of hydrogen bomb or, or the hindenburg disaster but let me tell you a known devil is better than a known known angel if you know what aspects of hydrogen has to be monitored to extract its safe characteristics then you will be able to use it as a very safe fuel in fact hydrogen is safer than gasoline and it has been proven by the research in in miami university researchers in miami university have shown this the first figure shows that hydrogen flame is coming very violently on the left side the second figure shows the petrol has eaten up the vehicle whereas hydrogen is very smooth it is because of the diffusivity of hydrogen and i think i'll move a little faster in view of the lack of time and uh, as i said in indian context diesel is a very important fuel and hydrogen engine is unsuitable for diesel engine 
researchers in Cornell, in Cornell University had a compression ratio of 29, they were not able to do. Professor Ikegami in Japan once said that he was able to achieve compression ignition of hydrogen. The researchers in General Motors subjected to it and they found out subsequently, Professor Ikegami found out that the lubricating oil deposited in the combustion chamber was working as a hotspot and the engine was literally converted to a spark ignition engine. And Professor Ikegami was intellectually frank enough to subsequently write a paper and say that he was, been able, he was able to cast the culprit, the combustion chamber deposits, the lubricating oil deposit in the combustion chamber acted as a source of thermal energy and gave rise to this type of uh, ignition. So inadvertently, this was converted to a spark ignition operation. So the best way to run a diesel engine is dual fuel operation, which are very important for the developing countries like India, where we consume about six times uh, mode of, I mean, we consume about six times uh, petrol as far as the diesel is concerned. So dual fuel operation. So we tried that also. This was the multi-cylinder hydrogen diesel dual fuel engine in which, as I just said, it has to be both the fuels together. You start with the diesel, achieve the uh, ignition, then switch over to hydrogen, supply hydrogen and the combustion remains stable. And you are able to, I think 45% to have shown here, but you are able to get about 53% and this was a multi-cylinder diesel dual fuel engine. What I'm trying to impress upon you that in a country like India, where more emphasis is given to diesel for its application spectrum, diesel could be adopted in the hydrogen engine also. After doing all this work, so from 1981 to mid-2000, we are suggested by UNIDO. I mean, in fact, uh, Professor T. N. Vajiroglu, who happens to be the chairman uh, of the International Association of Hydro Energy. He suggested me, because there was quite a bit of uh, publications on behalf of IIT Delhi. So he suggested, why don't you try something to develop a system for practical application? So in fact, uh, they had invited some project proposals from Unido and I had written a proposal which is accepted uh, to, out of uh, several proposals, IIT Delhi's proposal was accepted and we had a splendid combination of industry academia interaction. Dr. Pawan Goenka of Mahindra and Mahindra he was a very, very enthusiastic person. He has got a very uh, good vision about hydrogen. He suggested that IIT Delhi and Mahindra and Mahindra join hands. At that point of time, I had been to the United States and given a talk Air products of USA also agreed to us. And the proposal I had written was granted by the United UNIDO. It was a very auspicious moment that the industry and the academia joined hands and funds were available from an international agency. So we had already started this work. So we got a typical three-wheeler engine of Mahindra and Mahindra and started the experiments in the laboratory. We carried out uh, all sorts of fermentation combination to optimize the safe operation of the transfer of technology from lab to land. And after that was done, the vehicles were tried in Mahindra's, uh, uh, Mahindra's complex in Pune. Then after that, we put them in uh, Pragati Maidan. Air products had airlifted one of their units from USA. They had put it there also. So air products, IIT Delhi, Mahindra and Mahindra, with the blessings of Ministry of New and Renewable Energy and United Nations Industrial Development, we uh, installed these vehicles in the Pragati Maidan. And this is the genesis of the project, which I said. These are all the experiments that were carried out in IIT Delhi. Lots of work at every point was a big learning. 
and we moved ahead and finally optimized the configuration before we transfer it to engine. And as you can see, the performance characteristics, as you can see, this uh, fuel consumption is so low compared to hyd uh, gasoline, hydrogen combustion. And this is again the oxides of nitrogen. As you can see, the tallest figure is the contribution of the gasoline or the petrol. And for hydrogen, we were not able to get a bar also, so that we had to just write down. So practically no emission. And this was a tremendous achievement that we were able to run it over a wide range, get extremely good efficiency and practically no emission. We were able to install these vehicles and you know you have seen in the video the video it was said that the vehicles had been running in Pratimadan for four months because at that time this video was taken but these the videos uh, I mean these vehicles did run in Pratimadan for about five years and this was the occasion in which you can see here Dr. Bon going up uh, Mahindra and Mahindra the people from Unido people from Air Products people from uh, MNRE all these people, uh, people from uh, ITPO, all these people are there and this sent a very strong signal in favor of hydrogen. And subsequently you have seen that is the video that is the CNN IBN interview, which uh, I had given. This had also come in the Times of India newspaper and the European Union newspaper. We got lots of uh, applauses from around the world uh, at this achievement. So these are the people, as you can see, from ITPO, Dr. Pohan Goenka. Interestingly enough, this point was discussed in UNIDO Vienna. And subsequently, the director general of UNIDO had come to Delhi and he had a joy ride in this vehicle. The person looking for the other side was from UNIDO International Center of Hydrology. And all this was discussed in Vienna and subsequently, Sri Lanka wanted to replicate this project. And they had invited IIT Delhi and uh, Air Products. I had been to Sri Lanka. And they had also analyzed the possibility of replicating this project. But unfortunately, in India, certain things we get uh, very expensive, but they were all available. I mean, they had shown me a place which is uh, as why it was uh, near the uh, field, near the Pagati Maidan, but uh, obviously they were not able to, to get the hydrogen for such application, which in India we could do. This is the filling station, which was airlifted by air products from United States and introduced in the uh, Pagati Maidan. And this is how hydrogen is being filled in the, filled in the uh, three wheelers. You know, after the you know, when Dr. Vajirogno suggested me to write a project so that the technology can go from lab to land, I purposefully decided that let us try it on a single cylinder engine or a twin cylinder engine, but not a multi cylinder engine in which the injection system, the synchronization mechanism, the fuel field mechanism, each cylinder at a particular time may be technically difficult. And it was very important to demonstrate to the people that such a technology is possible in this country where you will have uh, vehicles practically with no pollution. And this is why we choose the three wheelers. After the three wheelers were funded by the uh, UNIDO and the project was over, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy also provided some funds to extend the project on the field operation. So that by way of running the vehicles in Pragati Maidan for a longer period, we got the impression that this is a stable, acceptable fuel, stable, acceptable, safe fuel, which gives high efficiency and practical no emissions. And this is a very, very important conclusion in Indian context where, in fact, as you know, we are still looking for the substitutes, uh, the prospective alternative fuel. At this point of time, we were suggested by the ministry to upgrade this technology to the buses. And the minibus of Mahindra was chosen for these experiments. And this was obviously a multi bus, a more uh, complicated technology. But as you know, once this is
the voice is not audible. Looks like there is a certain issue. Uh, Arun sir, please uh, see. Sir, we are Professor Das is connecting again. Yeah, I'm talking. I am talking, sir. Okay. He's trying. Okay, sir. Just Uh, please wait. Just he is connecting again. There is some network issue in the. Uh, please stay connected.
sorry the hello hi yes sir uh, sorry uh, this was uh, inadvertently <laughs> disturbed <laughs> i'm so sorry okay so in fact uh, okay that's fine okay sorry so this is the indian test bed uh, at the uh, iit delhi lab in which uh, all the experiments were carried out and parameters were optimized so this is the bus as you can see the power developed had been 90 hertz or uh, hello sir prop uh, yeah probably sir screen to be shared i suppose Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Visible, visible. Visible, 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 visible. Yes. now visible. Okay. Uh, so, as you know, sorry. Sorry. Oh, uh, as you know, for, this is what I talked about the internal combustion engine, but fuel cell is coming up in a very big way, and obviously fuel cell is a probably uh, the ultimate technology. But in Indian context, initially we thought of internal combustion engine because the internal combustion engine could be implemented even tomorrow. Fuel cell will take a lot of time because of the economics and the technological point of view. so tata motors have already developed the fuel cell bus and lot of people are working in this area that you right now no fuel cell cars are pretty common right now in the developed countries even though they have not been i mean the, the they have been developed but they have not been that popular on road but this is another thing we have to move ahead and as you know in india the implementation scheme has been very aggressive and it's possible that we move much faster and reach the target sooner than so these are the toyota fuel cell cars i mean just for the sake of information so i saw so that's all and uh, this is the uh, conclusion of my research you know the the more you study a subject you get the feeling that you are practically uh, much uh, lesser behind and in uh, miles to go before you could stop thank you so much thank you sir thank you so right. next uh, next we did the query session sir yes. sir we got some query from the facebook and some some chat box okay so the query the the first query the is there any better fuel uh, source or alternative rather than hydrogen bigger source yeah you better so better fuel source or alternative rather than hydrogen see uh, it all depends upon how you look at things a particular fuel has to be just from several angles first is the if you talk of the resource the available resource the technology of developing the fuel then the utilization theoretical i mean you know in a way hydrogen is the alchemy stream it has got an infinite source potential you have okay. abundant solar energy and abundant ocean so the most convenient technical marriage between these two will give you an infinite source of fuel but this is probably a novelist idea if you think of the economics behind the production of hydrogen 
and the energy that goes to you know all of us study electrolysis from our school days but the amount of energy that goes into electrolysis for producing hydrogen all these things have to be computed but obviously at this point of time from this application uh, hydrogen probably the most attractive, uh, attractive in uh, from my point of view okay sir thank you so second query from the head chemical engineering my iit lucknow uh, dr dhananjay singh what are the major risk associated with the hydrogen fuel see the risk associated with hydrogen fuel is its temperamental combustion characteristics yeah. what i mean by that its combustion characteristics are very different from the conventional fuels you must have heard about the hindenburg disasters the problem happened they just confused helium with hydrogen on the basis of lightness but unless you go to the other chemical properties and evaluate it properly uh, this will be dangerous so as i said hydrogen suppose petrol is spilled on a floor there will be a threat of danger until all the petrol evaporates but hydrogen if leaks will go to incombustible proportions within minutes because of its high diffusivity so what i mean to say that they the mechanism of handling them should not be the same okay sir thank you sir another another query from the another faculty abhay ratan pande hydrogen cars are electrical car which one will be more sustainable see if sustainable is the term i think hydrogen is the most sustainable because it doesn't have to depend on anything else apart from the infinite source which is available in this country in in the planet but the technology of application and the economics of developing the particular system there are some questions arise on that and again the storage oh, okay so sir if, if 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 just from sustainability point of view alone obviously hydrogen is more sustainable but you know the problem is that you can't store the 500 cylinders in a truck and carry the vehicle that's another aspect of the story okay sir thank you another query from anand singh for ic engines what is the chance of detonation in case of hydrogen as a fuel detonation locking these things do not occur in hydrogen because of its you know hydrogen got very high octane rating it doesn't occur the only problem has been the backfire and that backfire is because of the minimum ignition energy and the high flame speed locking doesn't occur unless you go to a very very high compression ratio and to design a engine for a very high compression ratio there are other uh, technical production oriented problems so locking is practically uh, ruled out in a operating uh, existing uh, hydrogen vehicle okay sir thank you sir last query from my side sir it's my problem uh, is hydrogen the fuel of the future i think uh, the, see once we fix a point at the future and we really start working towards it the time period gets compressed and what is thought to be futuristic that because the day of uh, because the item of tomorrow i remember when 1981 i started on the hydrogen there are many people including uh, an ex director of one of the iits he told me why are you working on hydrogen which will come after 20 years but after 25 years he met me he said you had a vision that you worked on hydrogen so i think hydrogen is not futuristic the time period has compressed and hydrogen should be for tomorrow for today itself but the only thing that there should be a proper rational integration of production utilization and storage from application point of view okay sir thank you thank you so now i invite uh... Uh, professor salen sinha for out of thang propose out of thang professor salen sinha thank you uh, dr arun uh, first uh, sir i am very thankful to uh, professor das actually uh, uh, when i was doing phd at iit kanpur during 2002 to 2006 uh, during that duration i met uh, three four times to dr das uh, my guide is dr avnash agrawal So, sir, perhaps you remember <laughs> those yes, things yes. many so that, times uh, at the so IIT Delhi. Sorry, so that way we have a grand relationship. 
Abhinash was my student, so he's like my son. So we're a student. Yeah, yeah, like sure. <laughs> sure, sure, sir. <laughs> so at that time, I got the opportunity to meet the Dr. Das, and this lockdown period again gave me the opportunity to hear you, sir. Very, very thankful to Professor Das, just giving this beautiful talk and explaining the so complex terms or uh, technical terms of the issues related with the Hadoian frame plane velocity and so many things. And I think definitely it will be the very, very useful for the students who wants to build or who wants to do the work in the uh, uh, hydrogen as a fuel. It will be very helpful to the PhD students as well as MTech students. I am also, again, very thankful all the faculty available here uh, the, uh, I can see the coordinator, Sita Lakshmi ma'am is there, Dhananjaya Singh, and too many faculties are uh, just listening here. So I'm very, very thankful to all the faculty and also the students, and uh, hope that a student will uh, uh, just uh, inspire from the, your lecture and will want to work in the case of, uh, in the field of the hydrogen, because definitely it is the fuel of the future. And uh, sir, just one uh, curiosity in myself, that uh, when we will see this hydrogen fuel card in India? Oh, you know, uh, sometimes in India, we lose sight of the tree in the forest. Okay. We, and that actually has happened. At one point of time, if you remember, the National Hydrogen Energy Board uh, was prepared, uh, the, the roadmap was prepared by the ministry. Then uh, there was the biodiesel, now electric vehicles. So uh, all these things are being experimented. And I personally believe, again, very recently, there was a query from the Ministry about Hydrogen. I am quite optimistic that uh, this will be, uh, again, realized soon, because the, uh, the, the fear mongering uh, slogans of Hydrogen have vanished from the common man's mind. So I think uh, this will come soon now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, just uh, uh, the, whatever the situation arising arised here due to the lockdown, and definitely it is a blessing for us that we are able to hear so many speakers because it is not possible for all of us to spend time so much time in trouble. But it is not the technology, and this uh, uh, lockdown period has forced us to use that technology, and this is advantage for us to listen the speakers like you. Once again, I want to thank you, you all, for this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.